Welcome back to the series, How Math is Used in Construction. In this lesson, we'll be looking at converting measurements. Converting measurements is extremely important. There are so many areas in life where it's both helpful and sometimes even life depends on it. So let's look at some basics here. Let's begin with three different terms. First of all, a ratio, comparing two or more numbers. So three to 10, three boys, 10 girls. Five to 16, could be slope on a roof, rise of five, run of 16. Could be two to five to 13. So two dogs for five cats for 13 chickens on the farm. A fraction compares a part to a whole. So three out of five, six out of 21, 13 one hundredths. So 13 out of 100. Then we have rates. A rate is similar, but it compares a number to one, and it compares two different units. So in this case, 50 miles per hour. So that means you're traveling 50 miles per every one hour. 23 olives per can, 23 olives in one can. 8.3 pounds in a gallon, we say 8.3 pounds per gallon. This will be important as we're working at converting these. For finding missing values in proportional relationships, I'm going to look at three main ways of doing this. If we have a fraction such as 6 twelfths, we can often just have the intuition to see that 6 is half of 12, so this is the same as 1 half. So depending on your experience with math and how comfortable you are with it, you may have a lot of these that are memorized and you can be very intuitive with. There are some that may not be. One way that is foolproof and the best fallback when you're not sure is cross multiply and divide. So let's say we have one like 10 over seven and we need to convert this to something over 91, but we don't know what that something is. We start with the number above or below what we don't know. So in this case, 91, we cross multiply so diagonally multiply times 10, then we divide up or down, so 910 divided by 7, and the answer goes in our variable, which in this case is 130. This is great because it doesn't matter how big or complicated the numbers are, especially if you have a calculator, you just work it out. So cross multiply and divide. Use your logic to double check and make sure that this looks right. In this case, 10 is larger than 7, 30 is larger than 90. This makes sense. The other way, if we have some smaller numbers, let's say we have the slope on our roof is 212, and our span is 36, we want to know the rise. So in this case, I can look at it, and I can quickly see that 12 times 3 is 36. So if I do the same to the top, 2 times 3 is 6. That gives me my proportional relationship. I could cross multiply and divide this. 36 times 2 divided by 12, I would still get 6. Let's look at an example of this. Jamie is traveling back to college after a break. He knows that he will travel 432 miles and that the speed limit is 55 miles per hour. How long will the drive take him if he travels at the speed limit? So we know a rate here, miles per hour. This means he's traveling 55 miles in one hour. We also know that he is going to be traveling a total of 432 miles. What's important when we set these proportional relationships up is that we keep our units on either the top or the bottom the same. So in this case, our miles are on the top, our hours are on the bottom. Since what we don't know is our hours, we will start with the 432 times one divided by 55, and we get 7.85 hours. Now that 0.85 hours isn't very specific because our clocks don't use decimals. So let's convert the 0.85 hours. We know that 60 minutes is the same as one hour. So it doesn't matter if the hours are on the top or the bottom. It just matters that we be consistent with our next one. So in this one, we're going to put our minutes on the top, hours on the bottom. We have the 0.85 hours that we're going to convert into minutes. So 0.85 hours times 60 divided by 1 gives us 51 minutes, meaning that the total time will be 7 hours and 51 minutes. 
Let's look at a case of converting imperial to metric. Merlin is building a doghouse, but the plans he downloaded have metric units, and the tape measure Merlin is using only has feet and inches. The front of the doghouse is 124 centimeters wide and 96 centimeters tall. Convert these measurements so Merlin can use his tape measure. Give the accuracy to sixteenths of an inch. So let's use the conversion of 2.5 centimeters to one inch. It is rounded, but it's close. And again, we're going to put our centimeters on the top because they were in the first rate. And so we'll start with the 124 because it's above the variable we don't know. 124 times 1 divided by 2.5 gives us 49.6 inches. Now we need to convert the 0.6 inches into sixteenths because 0.6 won't be on his tape measure. We knew there are 16 sixteenths in one inch. So if we create our proportional relationship here, we're going to look for the sixteenths. We know it's 0.6 inches. So 0.6 times 16 divided by 1 gives us 9.6. We can round the 9.6 and we get 10 sixteenths. So this is a case where we can see both 10 and 16 are divisible by 2. So we can just divide by 2. We simplify it to get 5 eighths. And our total measurement is 124 centimeters is equal to 49 and 5 eighths of an inch. So let's do this again for the height. 2.5 centimeters is 1 inch. We already know that one. This time we are looking for the equivalent of 96 centimeters. So 96 times 1 divided by 2.5 gives us 38.4 inches. So let's take the 0.4 and convert it to sixteenths. Again, we know 16 sixteenths in 1 inch. And we are looking for 0.4 inches. 0.4 times 16 divided by 1 gives us 6.4. We round that and get 6 sixteenths. Again, we can see these are both divisible by 2. So we divide them both by 2, and we simplify to 3 eighths. So 96 centimeters is 38 and 3 eighths inches. Let's look at a volume example. Chet is going to fill his swimming pool with his garden hose and wants to estimate how long it will take. His swimming pool is 25 feet by 40 feet and averages 8 feet deep. Chet times filling a 12-gallon container and finds that it takes him 85 seconds. How long will it take him to fill the swimming pool? Let's begin by finding the volume of the swimming pool. So 25 times 40 times 8 is 8,000 cubic feet. But we need to be able to make this match with the gallons because that's how he did his test. So using the conversion of 7.5 gallons is the same as 1 cubic foot. I can set up a proportional relationship again. Gallons on the top, cubic feet on the bottom. 8,000 times 7.5 divided by 1 is 60,000. So I know there's 60,000 gallons in the swimming pool. So now let's look at the rate of gallons per second. We know he can fill 12 gallons in 85 seconds. So how many seconds will it take to fill 60,000 gallons? In this case, we cross multiply and divide again. 60,000 times 85 divided by 12 will give us 425,000 seconds. Now, if you're anything like me, that doesn't really mean a whole lot. I have a hard time conceptualizing just about a half a million seconds. So let's break this down into units that we can understand more easily. We know that one minute is the same as 60 seconds, so I can set up a proportional relationship. 425,000 seconds times one minute divided by 60 seconds gives 7,083.3 minutes. So when we're doing this step, let's leave the decimals alone. We'll just carry on the full minutes. And let's take that to hours. We know there are 60 minutes in one hour. So we take our 7,083 minutes, multiply by 1, divide by 60, and we get 118.05 hours. That's still kind of hard to conceptualize, so let's take this to days. We know that one day is the same as 24 hours. So let's set this up with our 118 hours. 118 times 1 divided by 24 gives us 4.92 days. So let's start with our four days. We know we have four full days. 
Now to find our hours, we know again one day is 24 hours and we have this 0.92 because it was 4.92 days. So 0.92 days times 24 hours divided by one gives us 22 hours. Let's do the same thing on the next one. We know 60 minutes is the same as one hour. So let's take our 0 0.05 hours times 60 divided by one gives us three minutes. One minute is the same as 60 seconds. We're looking for 0 0.3 minutes. 0 0.3 times 60 divided by one gives us 18 seconds. So that would be the total time that it would take if his water kept flowing at exactly the same rate. So let's look at an example of working with units. Justine knows that her car gets 24 miles per gallon, but the paperwork she was filling out asked for the fuel consumption in liters per 100 kilometers. What is the correct rate that she should enter? So let's just start with what we know. Sometimes we don't see the whole process right at the first, but start with what we know Start working it through. It may not be the quickest way, but you'll always get there if you just keep going with what you know. 24 miles per gallon is her rate that she knows. Now I know that I can convert miles to kilometers by multiplying by 1.6 kilometers is the same as one mile. Now this time I'm just multiplying two different rates. So I can multiply them across and I get 38.4 mile kilometers and one gallon mile. Now these units don't really make sense. And there's a specific reason why I formatted them the way I did. And that's because if you see here, there is a mile on both the top and the bottom. Anytime we divide anything by itself, it's one, so they cancel out. So the mile on the top and the mile on the bottom, and I'm left with 38.4 kilometers per gallon. That's a rate that I can understand. So now let's take that rate and let's look at, we know one gallon is the same as 4.55 liters. You'll notice that in one case I have the gallons on the bottom and one case I have the gallons on the top. This is so that the gallons cross out and when I multiply them, I get 38.4 kilometers for every 4.55 liters. Now this isn't quite what I need, so let's divide the, both the top and the bottom by 4.55, which gives me 8.4 kilometers per liter. The reason I divided by 4.55 on top and bottom is because I knew it would give me a unit of one liter at the end of this. I'm gonna just flip that upside down, it doesn't really matter, but I just know this is gonna work better for what I'm coming to at the end. So one liter, for every 8.4 kilometers I travel. And this time I want to know how many liters in 100 kilometers. So now that it's set up like this, I can use cross multiply and divide. 100 times one divided by 8.4 gives me 11.9 liters for every 100 kilometers I drive. So 24 miles per gallon is equal to 11.9 liters per 100 kilometer. So let's review. Keep your units organized. Let's go back to an example we did earlier. 2.5 centimeters is equal to one inch, and we're looking for the equivalent of 124 centimeters. So we take 124 times one divided by 2.5, and we get 49.6 inches. Now in this case, we're dealing with proportional relationships. Centimeters are on the top, inches are on the bottom, Let's look what would happen if we mix this up. Let's flip one of them. So now we would have 124 times 2.5 divided by one, which would give us 310 inches, which we can see is totally wrong. And what's confusing here is that when we multiply different rates, we do want the units alternating one on the top, one on the bottom, so they can cancel out, but not when it's proportional relationships. Proportional, they must stay proportional. The same units on the top, same units on the bottom. So kind of tricky to get that, but the more you do it, the more familiar you'll become with it. The other thing is just to work from what you know. You may not always see how you're going to get from the beginning to the end in a problem, but take what you know, start converting it. You will get there.
just keep at it.